you know, like, I said it so confidently because I used to. I used to just, when I was angry, I'd act and I'd do something, but I can't do something right now. It's not really your fault. I mean, you're acting as much as you can by housing your friends who don't have a place to go and helping and helping people. But when an institution kicks you out, when you get evicted, you can't really yeah. you can't really do anything but go and then find somewhere stable to be and then go back and act. I used to fight against institutions though. Yeah, but when you live in this is <laughs> when you live in a society <laughs> I hate myself so fucking much Get a lot of this society <laughs> No, really when, when, when you live in a capitalistic system Where institutions, you know, rule over all It's hard to fight against an institution Even if you are, are a conscientious objector to it Yeah because you, you, yeah, you have to live in it in order to <laughs> do any. It's weird. Yeah. It's, it's, you know. No, no, I know. Okay. I deleted the first video by accident. So, fuck me. Um, okay, I'm going to try to do this better. Okay. So, last night, um... Around 11:27 ish, um, the entire student body of MICA, Garland Institute College of Art, um, got an email saying that we have to move out of the dorm system um, because of COVID 19 or coronavirus. Um, Mind you, this is right now, it's March 12th, and you know, the semester doesn't end until May, whenever, like 8th or something. And we have to move out within the week. Um, and the school's been really like cagey about literally everything. Um, we don't know what the fuck's going on. We, we don't have any more or less, like, we don't have any more information than we have to move out. And we might possibly be able to come back, um, but we don't know when. Um, we would have to do online classes for an indefinite period of time, which is difficult because we have studio classes where we have to create things in spaces where we have access to materials anyway um because of this and because of the sudden evacuation um a lot of students are going to be displaced um you know out of homes and, and and shit like that or just like not in safe places at home um And that's, that's fucked. Um, it's, it's very difficult. Um, I, I kind of want to document that process. Because, I don't know, I, I just want to document it. I, I think it's, I think it's something that should be documented. Um, but yeah, um, we're gonna start packing today because we have to move out by Saturday. We don't know if we'll be able to come back, but they say we're supposed to be able to, but you, you know, who knows? Because we're not gonna be told anything until the last fucking minute. Um, but yeah, um, I'm, I'm just really upset. I, I, I hope everyone's going to be okay, but I don't know if they are. I'm gonna miss. I'm gonna miss everyone. Everything.
what was to you like what was happening during the time you got the email and like what was what was the fallout and what was like the next plan from that if that makes sense well i spent time texting my family because i didn't really feel like calling them because they emotionally drained me mm -hmm. um i spent the time being up with you in the dorms and then half the time running around the green screaming at the top of my lungs <laughs> as some people could maybe note i'm not sure how many people saw me a few people did what was your like plan of action just like from there my plan of action was like well i don't have a lot of choices so i was like i guess i will be moving back with my abusive mother um just for the state of storage my dad was like you can stay with me in the woods and i'm like <laughs> i'm not staying with you in the woods <laughs> maybe so though because then there's less <laughs> chance of infection were you worried? Like, I, obviously you were worried, but like, what, what did that, how did that manifest, you know? What manifested mostly was that I wasn't really sure what was going to happen to my like college career and that like most of the time I've spent here trying to like heal is going to be reversed as I'm like just taking, just taking what I have as opportunities to go back to stay with my mother and that means that I have to like be a little more resilient and a little more stronger if, if not to be so I'm not re-traumatized. Mm -hmm. Micah's decision to do this, what is it? How do you feel about it? Well, I want my money. Um, I like want some of it. I mean, obviously not going to get all it back. We did utilize some things, but this is like a disaster. We're not getting, we're not taking advantage of meals anymore. We have like studio space that we can't access. We're basically not even taking classes at this point anymore. Mm -hmm. I just, I just want some money back. I'm just kind of mad. I'm just mad. At the, I'm always mad at the administration. <laughs> They're ne they've never been good. <laughs> God, I, Meg is so stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about it? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, just everything. Like it's always. This place has always kind of like rubbed me the wrong way. Just because of its whole like fake woke diversity shit. Mm -hmm. Not actually caring, just like caring what's, you know, the on numbers. On the surface level. Yeah, like what's on the page and actually helping anyone. Like the fucking wellness center shit. Mm -hmm. And how Owl can't like get their insurance. They can't fucking do shit. Mm -hmm. And you know how. Like the incident, um, like a couple months ago with, I don't even know, like the roommate that, the yeah, the and like that shit. They just put her in a private dorm. Yeah. In Hall. Mm. Her parents pay a shit ton for that, I can't imagine. She lives right outside of D.C. apparently. It makes sense. It makes sense. And like, oh, that whole shit with, um... And how apparently Micah has a no tolerance policy, but yes. rich, rich girl, rich white girl, just uh, didn't get expelled once she was caught with weed. And this, this, Micah has no backbone. And like the yeah. fucking shit with the studio, how we can't how the shit flooded and then we have nowhere to work and then we ha like Al had to clean have a fucking clean get a mop and bucket and clean it up themselves for us to have something functional yeah invitation for you know yeah. I hate I'm just like I'm gonna use a meal so I can get a sandwich keep thinking about it oh my god I'm asking okay yeah. uh, do you wanna like get comfortable standing or like uh, I'm fine like this okay um set the scene um so I was sitting in Carter 205 yes and um as I usual. as <laughs> usual as per usual I um and we all got the notification that the email came out mm -hmm. and you know we were all just frantically reading it I was doing your tattoo yeah <laughs> I was doing your tattoo and um we were like, oh wow, okay, our class is canceled tomorrow. My that was my first thought. My first thought was like, oh, maybe classes are just canceled for like the next few days and we can just figure things out after that. Um, but they're like, no, we're kicking you out. And that was like the worst case scenario that everybody was 
talking about. Like everyone was discussing, yo, worst case scenario, they're gonna kick us out. And then they're kicking us out. And then I hear screaming down the stairs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So maybe that was us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I hear screaming. I realized everyone was going into mass panic. Um, and then I go outside, there are people everywhere. <laughs> um, I see like a circle of people and they're just like kind of like venting about the whole thing. But I was like, guys, did you get the email? They're like, wait, no, what? What? Yeah, they didn't get the email, but like, you know, they're just like venting their frustrations about other things. Oh. And then I yelled to them, I'm like, hey, did you get the email? They're like, what, the email? And then they all opened their phones frantically. And I was just like, yeah, they're kicking us out. And they're like, oh, what the fuck? In that whole hour span, it's just comforting my friends who are like panicking because they didn't know where they would go because a lot of us in that moment knew that we would be displaced. Um, and I mean, for me, I had already accepted the fact that I couldn't go home because of like other things that had already happened to me, but then like this happening to like literally all of my friends at once, everybody panicking, everyone crying. And then like none of the RAs really did anything. They just kind of like let everybody go crazy. Yeah. Well, they um, didn't know what was happening either. So. Yeah, they didn't know what was happening either. So like, it's understandable. Um, but yeah, I had just kind of like, I just kind of like felt empty most of the time. Like I just saw everybody just go fucking insane. Like me and um, me and Marcelo, we um, we went to the train tracks and just talked about life after this all happened and stuff. And I was texting my friends constantly, like, "Yo, did you hear?" It was just a lot. Yeah. Okay, so I was actually on my bed, right? I was writing this, um, my bibliography that was due the next morning. Mm -hmm. So I was writing that and then I hear everyone scream outside. And then I look at my notifications and I see the email was sent out and I like ran outside <laughs> and we were reading it and we were like, ha oh, two weeks off. And then we got to, you know, the part. <sighs> then we got to the part and we were like, wait, fucking what? And then we just all started to panic. Mm. Like, we all just started panicking. We were like, no, fucking... We didn't think it was... We, we, we like, kept reading it over and over. And I, I was in shock. I couldn't believe it was real. Because I was like, what the fuck am I going to do? I was, like, pacing back and forth, trying to call my parents. And then I called my dad. And then I explained the whole thing. And then I went upstairs, you know. And then Ani was like, you, come with me, little faggot. <laughs> You're mine now. And, you know. Yeah. You've been acquired by the Kanepa family. I've been acquired. I've been I've been captured <laughs> by the Kanepa family. I am now one of theirs. I'm just not sure what I want to leave behind to Earth bring. Yeah, that's very, it's like a difficult thing. Especially because I'm so, I'm just so like finicky with my things. I always want to have my things with me at all times. But realistically, I can't do that. Yeah, no, I get it. Yeah. I'm gonna see if I can bring this with me because it's got all my clothes in it already. Mm -hmm. And it's very transportable. Mm -hmm. So I might just tape it up because that's what, that's what I've done with, that's what we did when we moved back at home. We taped up our drawers. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, the clothes are already in there. Yep. And it's like plastic. Um, I might bring my lamp too. It's sad as shit that we couldn't get a storage unit. <laughs> Cause like we were gonna do that at the end of the year. Yeah, we were gonna fucking do that, and they're like, "No, die." Yeah. Yeah, I gotta bring my bins because it's got my art shit, my video game stuff, mm. and I could fit more things in the bin. I'm just autistic. I don't <laughs> like this. It's okay. Hello. <laughs> um, I was on my phone listening to music um was it my chemical romance it was probably my chemical romance i don't remember the song because everything like the moment came um i was doing a comic actually about um how post seizure i can't really like use my hands well and i was making a comic about that on my phone and i heard commotion mm -hmm. outside of my room and i was I, I pulled down the menu then and i saw i got the email um, I am the bearer of ice cream. Uh -huh. How did you get ice cream? 
My friend Nadia was giving away this whole box of orange cream sickles. <laughs> Thank you, Dakota. <laughs> the, the soda. Oh, they're a little melted. Okay, <laughs> keep going. Yeah. Um. So I was sitting there and I was like, oh shit, the email's here. So I start reading the email um, and I kind of glaze halfway over it. Um, I hear crying outside. <laughs> I slam open the door and kind of scream, they're kicking us out. And Aiden's like calm. And so I go to lock myself in the bathroom. And I start crying in the bathroom. Because mm -hmm. I don't like crying in front of other people. And I call my parents and like, we need to make a plan. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, like, you roll in all of this. You're rolling I'm, coronavirus. I'm a yes, you you invented coronavirus. How do you yeah. feel? <laughs> how, am gonna, how am I gonna tell my mother? I don't know. No, what are you doing? Three of three of our friends, three of the people, you know, um, have been displaced in one way or another, whether or not they can't go home, like for whatever reason. Um, and so I kind of snap called my parents, like, because they needed to take me home anyway. And I was like, hey, can we take these three friends home? And they were like, yeah, of course. We'll find space. So this weekend, I'm moving four people into my house in Philadelphia. Um, for the time being, until whatever. What was your reaction to the email? I immediately started crying. <laughs> like, I'm talking, like, on the spot. Uh, <laughs> Alex, I was showing it with my friend because his, my friend Alex, because his phone, like, uh, couldn't read the email, so he was reading ahead of me, and then he read the part that said, um, that we had to get out of the dorms, and I, uh, started crying immediately because, well, I was talking to my friends earlier after the conference with Sammy Hoy that if we were kicked out of campus, I, like, don't have a place to go, so... Just that like <laughs> hit me immediately. I didn't think that was gonna happen because they didn't like have any hint of us having to leave campus. Um, after that, uh, like two people immediately offered me places to stay. So <laughs> that was nice. Uh, and then I went outside to call my mom just to, I don't know, to my mom yeah. uh, and people were screaming people were like out on the green screaming I saw like a group of people running past and they were like we're gonna go get drunk come <laughs> with us we're gonna go get drunk and there were more people just like screaming their heads off and like it was this kind of like mass panic I've never really seen before it was freaky I was just I was calling my mom crying because I just I needed to talk to someone who was like an adult. <laughs>